This is a model essay on a Christmas carol. The essay achieved full marks. The question was, starting with this extract, explore how Dickens uses the Cratchit family to show the struggles of the poor. Write about how Dickens presents the Cratchit family in this extract and how Dickens uses the Cratchit family to show the struggles of the poor in the novel as a whole. Firstly, it's important to read and annotate the extract provided. This should take about five minutes. The following extract is from chapter three, usually referred to as stave three of A Christmas Carol. You may wish to pause here to explore the extract in detail. In this extract, the ghost of Christmas present shows Scrooge the Cratchit family's Christmas celebrations. This particular A Christmas Carol essay is nine paragraphs long. Dickens uses the plight and poverty of the Cratchit family to attempt to shed light on the lives of the poor, in contrast to the lives of the rich aristocrats in Victorian society, like Scrooge. The first exclamatory sentence of the extract stated by Bob Cratchit that it was a wonderful pudding immediately implies that they are grateful and easily excited. Despite it being a small pudding for a large family, they all regarded it as a success. Perhaps this is because they usually did not have the luxury of a pudding, so any pudding at all was seen as a blessing. The adverb calmly also creates an aura of excitement in the atmosphere, as it implies that there is an apprehensive glee about the family. Again in the extract, Dickens has included the fact that they only possessed two tumblers and a custard cup for which the whole family shared. He then juxtaposes this with the idea of golden goblets, which only serve to emphasise the Cratchit's lack of wealth and widens the gap between societies rich and poor that during the Victorian era was wide and obvious. We see the Cratchits as a unit, a real family who is bonded by shared affection and strengthened with love, as opposed to money, status and wealth. The personal pronouns my, us and all, paired with the terms of endearment such as dears, indicate to the reader that the Cratchit family are a united force that stands up and rejoices in happiness and joy despite facing the rough shame of poverty that flooded Victorian London. The fact that even Tiny Tim, who bore a little crutch and was held up by an iron frame, stated, God bless us, everyone, only proves to the reader that Cratchits still remain in high spirits, regardless of their unfortunate circumstances. The use of the verbs wished and dreaded sum up the attitude of the poor and in particular the Cratchits. They were hopeful and positive, as if they wished and expected their lives to improve, but also dreaded the future, as they recognised that if the rich were unwilling to help, they would suffer and even have their son taken by death. Scrooge, a wealthy, well-off, privileged businessman, refused to donate to the portly charity collectors as he, like many others in the context of the novella, assumed and believed that the poor were idle, as if they were poor from their own laziness and lack of ambition. Many in Victorian society thought that they were a nuisance. In fact, Scrooge even went so far as to say that if they were to die, they better do it quickly and decrease the surplus population. This attitude was the one that Dickens was looking to expose and combat with the publication of A Christmas Carol in the Industrial Revolution. It is speculated that it was written in staves like a Christian carol and published as a book cheaply rather than advertised as a play because in this form it would reach more people. Dickens probably assumed that a short, witty story would last longer as a Christmas tale than a play would, and he was correct. Throughout the novella, Dickens portrays Scrooge and Bob as opposites who directly contrast with each other. For instance, as Bob retires to his dismal little cell where the single coal that his cruel employer allows him burns, he is still grateful and thankful for allowing him one day off and in high spirits as he returns home. This gratitude over such a simple, almost necessary act of decency from Scrooge shows his meagre conditions. Bob is able to rejoice in the spirit of Christmas far more openly than Scrooge. 
This directly contrasts with Scrooge's flippant, dismissive attitude towards the struggles of the poor, as when approached by some charity collectors if he would consider placing a small donation, he replies with a predictably cold, callous questions. Are there no prisons and union workhouses? These rhetorical questions could either signify his ignorance to the issue at hand, or simply his refusal to engage in helping. Either way, Scrooge demonstrates a distinct lack of empathy towards the poor, and instead returns to his comfortable set of rooms, where he goes about his daily routine, stopping not even for a second to think of those who are less fortunate than he. Dickens also mentions the Cratchit family in some of the visions or ghostly encounters that Scrooge experiences. For instance, when the ghost of Christmas yet to come, an ominous figure shrouded in a deep black garment that easily moved like mist, showed Scrooge the Cratchit family mourning the loss of Tiny Tim, Scrooge cannot help but to hang his head in penance and guilt. This suggests that he feels great shame towards his actions. Similarly, when shown ignorance and want by the jovial giant Ghost of Christmas Present, Scrooge was taken aback when his own miserly phrase, are there no prisons, was used against him to educate him on his wrongdoings. Scrooge feels a pang of guilt across his heart. This indicates that from seeing the effects of the plight of the poor causes him such grief that he feels it emotionally and physically, as if the pain is so strong that it can cross over from the emotional to the physical, like the message he learns comes over from the supernatural to the real world. In effect, Dickens contrasts the lives of the Cratchits to the life Scrooge lives, and highlights how despite their obvious misfortunes, they are the ones who carry the Christmas spirit. If you found this helpful, you may wish to check out some of the links in the description for some other supportive resources.